Good morning, Pathway. It is so good to see you this morning. I'm telling you, we are so glad that you have joined us this morning. God is going to do something in your life today. You picked a great day to be here. And I want you to do a moment, just take a moment right now and share this. Hit the share button. It's never been so easy to witness and to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus by just simply hitting a button. So do that now. And we are just so grateful. Thank you so much for just joining us consistently through this season. You have been there. We feel you. We feel your prayers. We feel your support. And we are so grateful for it. I'm excited to be standing in front of you to share the word of God because I believe that I have a word for you in your house today and it is going to be a powerful, powerful time. So I want you right now, if you have your Bibles, if you'll turn to the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and I just want to do a little shout out to Pastor Danny and Miss Norma, the pastor and first lady of this house, how much we love them. Show them some love right now. Just kind of hit your heart hit the likes, put the clapping emoji up, whatever it is, and just let them know how much you appreciate and love them. In addition, today is Pastor Ricardo's birthday. Today is his birthday. Happy birthday, Pastor Ricardo. We love you, man. And I want you, after this service, I want you to go to his page, give him some love on his page in his special day, his birthday being today. We love and appreciate him so, so very, very much. I want to get into this thing because Hebrews, the 10th chapter, is where we're going to be camping out today. And I love Hebrews. It's, it's one of the most fascinating books in the New Testament. In fact, it, it really isn't very clear who wrote the book. We just know that it is written as an epistle to the Hebrews who had come to the faith uh, in, in the Lord Jesus. And, and so we know that there is a story behind this incredible this incredible book in the Bible, and, and we're going to get into the 10th chapter, and I'm reading from the 23rd verse, and that's where we're going to start today, and we're going to read in, in verse 23, and it says this, let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess, for he who promised is faithful, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. I want to talk to you today uh, just for a few moments on the subject, wanted a few good encouragers, wanted a few good encouragers. How could we ever make it through our life without encouragement? It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter uh, where you come from, whether you're a follower of Christ or whether you're a non-believer, an atheist. It does not matter where, if you are breathing on this earth, everyone needs encouragement. Everyone needs support. Everyone needs a boost of confidence. Everyone needs hope. Mark Twain has a quote that says, I can live for a week off of one good compliment. Another uh, writer says, William James says this, he says, the deepest principle in human nature is the craving to be appreciated. George Adams says this, encouragement is the oxygen of the soul. Encouragement is something that everyone needs. Your marriages need encouragement this morning. Teenagers need encouragement. Young adults need encouragement encouragement. Uh, the parents of those teenagers need encouragement. Senior citizens need encouragement today. Those that are fighting sickness, they need encouragement today. Those that are fighting COVID-19, they also need encouragement. Pastors, <laughs> can I just stop right there and just lean on this table and tell you that pastors need encouragement. In fact, I'm grateful. I think I'm still standing today because of the grace of God and the encouragement of people. I tell you the truth. It wasn't long ago that I, I called Elder McDonald. Many of us in our church, we know who Elder McDonald is. And I just called him just to seek some advice from him, just some wisdom from him on a few things. 
and, and, and even beyond him answering the questions that I had for him, he just began to encourage me. And tears ran down my face as I was driving down the road because I was so desperate in need of encouragement. I even received a text message this week from someone that just says, hey, I'm thinking about you. Wanted to let you know that you were on my mind. I don't need anything. I just wanted to let you know that I'm praying for you and you're doing a great job. We all need encouragement in our life. I cannot tell you the times in my life that I have survived off of encouragement. So looking at our text today, I want to give you a little bit of the backstory before we get to this rich scripture that we read this morning. And, and, and it says, looking at our text, is you'll find that this was a, a group that was in dire need of encouragement. And, and they were a group that was divided between two. There were Hebrews by birth and Christians by faith. And, and it tells us there were, there were Hebrews that were, that were by birth meant that they had entered the world of Old Testament ritual. They, they, they followed the Old Testament dietary laws and they still were singing the Psalms of the Old Testament. They observed the feast days. They, they read the prophets and, and they, were, they, they kept the Sabbath day. They, they kept it holy. And, and, but, but then there were some of these same Hebrews, Jews, that had found faith in Jesus. They were Christians, and, and, and many of them were holding on to their Hebrew ways while those that were new in the faith were wanting to go in a different direction. So there was this great tension that was being caused in this season. They had come from the same uh, group of people, but they had been divided and, and there were some people that were wanting to go back, and some people say it's time for you to move forward. And there was this tension. There was this divide. There was this gray divide. I, you thought I said great divide, but it's a gray divide. It, it was like there was a gray place because it wasn't necessary for the people from the Old Testament, from the Hebrew ritual faith, it wasn't that what they were doing was wrong. There wasn't any wrong in them uh, still professing the Hebrew ways that they had learned and had, that have been carried through generations from the Old Testament. But there definitely was nothing wrong with, with professing Jesus. So here were people that came from the same place, but there was a gray divide. Lost in the gray area. And it's like that often in the world that we're living in is that we are getting lost in the gray area. Even the political climate that, that we are facing today, there's, there's all kinds of gray areas from de determining where you fall from your political beliefs. There's still gray areas when you are a believer. There's right on this side. There's right on this side. There's wrong on this side. There's wrong on this side. And, and there was a great divide in, in, in Hebrews. And, in, and I see a gray divide that happens within the believers today. And, and so the, the writer of Hebrews finally just said, whoa, whoa, stop. Stop what you're doing. There is nobody that is going on. Because he said, listen, there is nobody that's going to go anywhere. Because he says, let us hold unswervingly. I love that. He says, let us hold unswervingly. He says, we are not going to get, ain't nobody going anywhere. There ain't nobody going back. There ain't nobody staying. We're going to come together, and we're going to address the gray divide that we're facing. So, so there was this, this writer that spoke, and he says, listen, let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess he says, listen, ain't nobody going anywhere. He says, God has brought us this far by faith, and we are not about to swerve now. <laughs> I don't know if that's the way he said it. But he says, listen, God has been too good to us to allow us to swerve now. I think of the old song that says, we have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He's never failed us yet, singing, oh, oh. Oh, can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. 
And the writer of Hebrews says, listen, we ain't going to swerve now. We're going to get this thing back in the middle of the road. We're not going to lose faith now because this is the time for us to come together and put our faith in front of us and keep us from swerving. It's, we're not going to allow a pandemic to cause us to swerve. We're not going to allow political unrest to cause us to swerve. We're not, we're not going to allow brother COVID and sister Corona <laughs> and all their 19 kids. You heard what I said. They're, we're not going to allow them to cause us to swerve. We are going to hold on to the profession of our hope and our faith. And it says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. He says, listen to the hope that we profess. We're not swerving because we have hope. Oh, man, that's good news for somebody that's watching right now. We are not swerving. You're not swerving. I'm not going to swerve because I realize that through all this swerving tendency that we have, that we still have hope. We have hope and a future. We have hope that Jesus is still is still Lord. We have hope that God is still in control. So we can no longer have to worry about swerving because we know that we have hope. It says that we have a hope and we profess. Profess means to agree. We have to hold on to the hope that we agree on. Profess means that we come in agreement. So we have to find the hope and the place of agreement. Have you noticed that there's a lot that we can find that we disagree on? There's a lot of things that we can disagree on, but, but we have to que keep from swerving. We have to start focusing on what we do agree on. I, I like this. I think a good thing that we agree on is this. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I, we can agree on greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We can agree that God is our refuge, that God is our strength, that he's our very present help in our time of trouble. We can agree on Psalm 73 that says, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Out of all the things that we may not agree on, out of the gray divide that we may be falling into, we have to hold on to the hope and profess the things that we do agree on because it's in that place of agreement that we invite the Lord into our conversation, that we invite the Lord into our midst. And can I just find a few good encouragers that will find hope and hold on to the hope of agreement Find hope of the things that we agree on, that the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. And it says this encouragement, encouragement, it says that we must profess out of our mouth. We have to profess out of our mouth encouraging words. We have to profess out of our mouth life to those that are living in a dark place. We have to profess out of our mouth even over our own life that we are going to be healed, that we are going to be set free, that we are going to get through this season of our life. We have to profess that God is in control. We have to profess. Because the reality of it is, is what we say out of our mouth, it shapes us. In fact, our talk shapes our walk. I'll say it again for everybody back in the kitchen. Our talk shapes our walk. Because your mouth, remember this, your mouth is always where your miracle begins. Your, your mouth is where your miracle begins. It doesn't start with your bank account. It doesn't start with your intellect. It doesn't start with, with your degree. It doesn't start with how many zeros are behind your weekly paycheck. It, it has nothing to do with any of that. Uh, it's, the miracle is what we profess and what we say out of our mouth. Proverbs talks about, says that there's life and there's death that, that's in our tongue, that the power of it is in our tongue. And it goes on to say it's, it's what we profess is the results that we will reap. We will have an opportunity to re reap great things when we profess the right stuff. But on the other side, that if we, if we speak negative things, we will reap negative results. And, and when you speak health, healing comes. And, and when you speak wealth, prosperity comes. When you speak understanding, wisdom is the result. It, but, but if you speak doubt, 
that's the place where fear is the result. When you, when you speak negativity, that's where frustration is the result. So we profess, they say that confession is good for the soul. I like to say this, that professing is necessary for the spirit. See, confession, it may be good for your soul, but professing is necessary for your spirit. It's necessary to see you go to the next level of living. It's necessary to see you go to the next level of your life. It's necessary for you to get through times where you feel like you need to swerve or you're wanting to swerve. It's necessary that you're professing the right stuff out of your mouth. It's necessary. So it says, let us hold on unswervingly to the hope that we profess. For he has promised, for he who has promised is faithful. Oh, man. Can I just encourage someone this morning that he is a faithful God, that he's never left you not one time. He's never left me not one time. He's always been by my side. He's never given up on me, even when I've given him reasons to give up on me. I'm telling you, he's a faithful, faithful God. Second Timothy 2.13 says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. We have to learn, and we've got to not swerve and get it back in the middle of the road, get past the gray divide, and just rest in the reality, the reality that God is faithful, that he's faithful. It, it, it doesn't matter what goes on in our world. It doesn't matter what our future looks like, he's still faithful. He cannot deny himself. He is still faithful. What happens if Donald Trump is the president again? Well, you know what? I know this for a fact. God is faithful. What happens if Joe Biden is the president? I don't know, but God is faithful. What happens if we don't get a vaccine soon? I don't know, but God is faithful. What happens if my kids are going to be in this house forever, and I'm going to have to teach them in this house, and I'm going to have to eat all my food. They're, they're, they're using all the toilet paper up. They're spending all this time around me. I don't know how I'm going to go crazy if we don't have a break from this. What are, what's going to happen? I don't know, but God is faithful. If I could just get you this morning to realize anything at all, is that he's faithful. He's never let you down one time. He ain't about to start in the year 2020. God is faithful. I hope this is helping someone this morning because I, I continue to read and it says, let us consider in verse 24 how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Spur. I love it. It, it spur means to provoke. It means to stir up. It means to motivate. It, it, in, in this translation, I like to use the word spur. And I don't know if you can see what's in my hand, but, but you got to realize this. God will place people in your life to spur you toward a goal. And I'm holding some spurs that I bought on Amazon. Thank you, Amazon Prime. Uh, I bought these spurs as an illustration and I'm not much of a cowboy. You probably can tell by the way I'm dressed. I haven't been on any horses in a very long time. But I did some studying on spurs. And a lot of people have different opinions about spurs and as you use them on, on horses or bulls. And, and the reality of it is, is that the spurs, they really don't cause any pain at all. But it's just something that you use. It's a, motiv it's a motivation to push the horse toward a direction. It, it's a motivation to push the horse toward the place that it needs to go. And, and the reality of it is, is that sometimes we, we have people that will come in our life to spur us. They'll, they'll spur us. And then the minute that we feel that spur, we are left with a decision. It's either going to be something that we're going to embrace that will help push us toward a goal or it's going to be something that's going to cause us to, to back away from that person and feel like that they are a part of trying to keep us from the goal. We have to make sure that we have the responsibility as believers of faith to spur one another, not to hurt them, not to separate from them, but to nudge them toward the goal, to nudge them to the place that, that God has for them. 
Because the reality of it is, is that God is always going to put people in your life to see things in you that you can't see yourself. It's, it's the way the kingdom is built. There's always going to be someone that's going to see the greatness in you that you can't see in yourself. So they come along to uh, spur you. And that spurring, you could come back and go, I, you ain't touching me with that. Or you can just take the nudge and it may, go, oh, it may feel a little uncomfortable for a moment. But you take the nudge realizing that it's really meant to be an encouragement to you. An encouragement to get you to the goal of your life. Another thing, and I don't have it as an illustration, is, is any time that you, you, you find someone that is being spurred, it'll cause you to buck. It, you know, it'll, it'll cause you to buck. And if you've ever been to a rodeo, they, they also have a strap that they tie around the waist of a bull or, or a horse. And it's designed to make them uncomfortable. And, and it causes them to buck. It's, it's what they're tied to. And, and this is the thing. The enemy will, will cause you to be tied to negative things in your life. And when you're tied to negative things in your life, when you feel the spur, it will cause you to buck. And it will cause you to buck crazy. And, and it's like, no, 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 you don't understand. This is not about to hurt you. This is not about hurting you. This is about helping you. And so you've got to make sure that in your life that you are not tied to the wrong things. Because you know what? If you're tied to the wrong things, when someone that loves you comes to you to spur you, you will take it negatively and it will cause you to buck. we got a lot of people that are bucking right now. We need to calm. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to allow people to come in. We need to encourage one another and say, listen, there is greatness in you. There's a purpose in you. There's a plan in your life. And I refuse to stand by and watch you just spend your time bucking and tied to stuff that you know that you're greater than, tied to sin of your past, tied to bitterness, tied to, to, to offense in your life. You need to get untied so when you feel the spur, it will motivate you. It will encourage you. And it says that it will encourage you toward love and good deeds. It will encourage you toward love and good deeds. Ephesians 4, 2 says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. That is a scripture for the church that we're living in today. Not just our church, but the capital C church. Be humble. Be gentle. Be patient. And bear one another in love. Bear one another in love. We are in a season to where we need to be gentle with each other. We're in a season to where we need to be patient with one another. We're in a season where we're going to have to bear, carry one another in love. Because that is the encouragement. That is the encouragement that God is wanting us to operate in. As we are trying to get through the gray divide. God is wanting us to bear one another in love. And then it says this. Not, and not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. And this is what's so great about technology is that we're meeting together right now. It's not about meeting together in the building. Yeah, we're back in the building. We'd love for you to come if you feel up to it, if you feel comfortable to do so. If not, we're meeting together. And we're meeting every, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Facebook Live at 9 p.m. We're meeting together. Ministries are functioning within our church. They're meeting together. Because what happens is, is encouragement and connection, they run together. And when we are, in, when we are connected together, we are immediately encouraged. Isolation is, is very difficult right now. Isolation, uh, COVID-19 has forced us to be isolated. And isolation is a dangerous place. That's why encouragement and connection, they run together. And that's what he's saying. He said, listen, the, the, the writer of Hebrews is saying, listen, listen, you know what? We, we got to come back together because we've, we've allowed ourselves to separate. He says, listen, I know you're, you're thinking of the, of, of the Old Testament ways and, and we now have this, this faith in Jesus, but you know what? we got to come together and encourage one 
another. And sometimes, you know what? I don't know about you, but sometimes you have to encourage yourself. David talked about encouraging himself in the Lord. There's sometimes, I'm telling you, we live in a day where I feel like that if you don't have the ability to encourage yourself, it's going to be an uphill climb for you. You've got to encourage yourself with a great attitude every day. I got to encourage myself with a great attitude every day. Just because I'm holding this microphone and standing on this platform does not mean that I am always encouraged. There's many times, even here lately, that I'm having to encourage myself. Let the perspective of encouragement hit your life. I, I read this story about this rural area in, in Montana where there was wolves that were there was an outbreak of wolves everywhere so they they put up some posters and they said listen we're looking for some hunters that will that will kill these wolves in fact we're gonna pay five thousand dollars for every wolf that is killed well all the hunters man they they came out of the woodworks and they signed up so they began to start hunting and there was two guys Jeb and Earl <laughs> Jeb and Earl they were amateur hunters at best so they were hunting for a couple of days no wolves they finally decided just to just to put up a tent and just sleep overnight in the middle of the night Earl woke up he heard some growling he kind of shined his light and he saw all these fiery eyes and these teeth and he shined his light all the way around and he was surrounded by about 50 wolves so Earl he nudged Jeb and he says Jeb wake up we're rich that story tells us that you've got to encourage yourself every day with a good attitude. That if you feel like that you have obstacles in front of you, you've got to look from a different perspective. You've got to look with a different outlook on life to realize that you've got to get yourself up and encourage yourself in the Lord. And it says encouraging one another. Encouraging one another. Do not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. I'm closing, but I want to point one thing out to you. The word day is capitalized. It's, it lets us know that the days that we have every day are nothing compared to the great day of His coming. And I want this to be an encouragement to you today. Is even though we're having to get ourselves through every day of our life, you've got your stuff to do, I got my stuff to do. You're working through your stuff, I'm working through my stuff. And we count the days. And we count the days, the lowercase d days. But there's a great day of coming. That every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. That all of the stuff that we're going through, that, that it will all fall at the feet of Jesus. There is coming a day where COVID-19 will not be an issue. There is coming a day when the political unrest of our day will not be an issue. There is coming a day where racism will no longer be an issue. And we have to remember that the, there is a day that is coming. That there is a day that is approaching to where we will be with the Lord. And we will be with the Lord forever. And he says, listen, we got to come together. The writer of Hebrews says, listen, we got to come together. Because it's not about us, and it's not even about this day. But it's about the day that is approaching. I, I got a, a final story. There was this boy in second grade. He wanted to try out for the school play. And it was after school. So his, his mom drives him up there, and he jumps out of the car, and he quickly runs up to the door. He's excited to try out for the school play, and his mom sat in the car worried because she realized, realized that, his, that her son didn't have much talent. He couldn't sing, couldn't play, he couldn't act, he couldn't dance. He couldn't even remember any lines, and she was like, I don't know how this is going to go. And so about 45 minutes of waiting in the car, school door opens up. Here he comes walking toward the car with a big old smile on his face. 
opens the car door, sets in, slams the car door. And so mom just curiously just says, so honey, how did it go? And he says, mom, it went great. He said that, you know, they, they picked me to do something. Well, what did they pick you to do? He said, they chose me to clap and to cheer. And let me tell you, if there's anything that we need, and what you need this morning and what I need is we just need a few good encouragers that will just clap and cheer. So I want to take a moment right now to clap for every single mom that you have been fighting through this year, this pandemic, taking care of your kids and maybe even working overtime to make it work. I want to clap for all the senior citizens that you've had to deal with this pandemic as well to where you've had to stay in more than you ever have in your life in fear of getting out and afraid you would get the coronavirus. I want to clap and cheer for all the marriages that you have been fighting through this as well, trying to figure out how you're going to make it with your, your finances and the struggle. I want to clap and cheer for all of the school and all of the students that have had to had their schedule completely just messed up because they have to work from home and they have to look at a screen instead of being with their friends and where they rather be at school I want to clap and cheer for all the pastors all the pastors, not just in this church, but all the pastors that never thought this would come, that we never thought that we would have to be on a Sunday morning without anybody in our building and speak to people and speak to an empty congregation, but look at a camera. I, mean, God, I just want to just clap and cheer that they haven't, they haven't given up, they haven't thrown in the towel. I just want to clap and cheer right now for you that's watching, that you have been pushing through this season. And you may be broken hearted and you may be frustrated beyond just beyond belief but i'm here to clap and cheer for you because you know what you're gonna make it through this season i want to be an encourager to you i want to be a great encourager in your life to to allow you to to breathe a little bit to allow you to realize you know what i want to push you toward and we as a church want to push you toward love we want to bear your burdens. We want to help you through this season. Because this is the season for the few good encouragers to arise. So I cheer you on today. And I clap for you. Because God's best is still coming to your life. And I declare over you, Father, I thank you right now for every person. Father, I know there's people that maybe just feeling the motion of this moment as I am God their heart is so broken and they feel the heaviness of the days that we're living in and God I pray that they just will feel just a surge of encouragement come to their life God I pray that they will just feel a surge of your presence just rush into their room they're frustrated they're afraid but God I pray that they will feel encouragement right now that our best days, their best days, are still ahead of them. And I thank you, Father, for what you're doing. Protect them, keep them in your care. And we'll continue to clap and cheer for them as they push through this season, as we all push through this season. And we declare that our best is yet to come. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We're clapping and we're cheering for you. And we also want to encourage through prayer. And, and not only you, you reach out to us and we want to know, we have a, 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 a prayer request email that goes out. If you just message us and let us know what you're going through, we want you to know that we're here for you and to pray for you. You message us, let us know, con contact the office, contact us at polc.cc and let us pray for you. But in addition to encouragement is our country needs encouragement. And it's our place as believers to encourage with prayer. So our church, this Tuesday is going to be 21 days before our election. And we're going to go into a season of fasting and prayer. And we're going to daily let you know of a prayer topic that is connected to our country, how we can pray. It's one thing to post. It's another thing to pray. The Bible says that if my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. If believers don't pray, no one will. So we want to pray together for the next 21 days starting this Tuesday. 
And the way that you're going to hear about the prayer topic is you stay tuned to our social media, Facebook. But we also want to send you a daily text every day at 12 noon with the day's prayer topic. Will you pray with us as we pray for our country, as we pray from a kingdom position over our country? And I want you to do this. If you will, just I want you to, to uh, text P-O-L-C to the number 31996. P-O-L-C to 31996. And we want to give you a daily text of what you can pray about as we go through this season. And as we clap and cheer for our nation that their best is yet to come. We appreciate you joining us this morning. We're here for you. We're praying for you because our best is yet to come. God bless you and have a great Sunday.